the history of the British people, pioneers have gone forth into the world, blazing trails through unknown continents, discovering new lands for settlement, laying the foundations for that great brotherhood of free men, the British Commonwealth of Nations. These men of the past, spurred on by a common spirit of adventure, played their part in helping to establish the free people. The John Hawkins, the Francis Drake, the tribe of India, Dr. David Livingston, Captain Scott. Today, the spirit of these men lives on in the youth of Great Britain. In the year 1908, Robert Baden Powell founded the Boy Scout movement. Its aim, the training of boys for pioneering work, good citizenship, and international good fellowship. For those youngsters in whom the call of the sea is strong, the Sea Scout branch of the movement was formed, and it has become a means of combining a healthy recreation with the possibility of learning something of the art of seamanship. So to the Royal Research Ship Discovery, Sea Scout Training Ship, comes young Stanley Hardy. Here, with rigging to climb and boats to row, Stanley feels that it will not be long before he is ready to sail the seven seas. Yes, this looks as though it is going to be good. Even though it's river, you can sniff the salt sea air. Yes, you can definitely sniff it. Feeling hungry, young man? No, sir. I want to join the sea scout. Come below. We'll see what we can do about it. On joining the troop, he is introduced to the leader of the Curlew Patrol, of which he will become a member. When he is a scout, he too will shake hands with the left hand. Stanley is soon to learn that there is more to this business of sea scouting than running up and down the rigging and waiting for the cook to shout, come and get it. Here, a future generation of radio operators are learning the rudiments of wireless telegraphy. Knowledge of Morse's frequency enables scouts to save many lives in an emergency. Navigation is also an important part of the sea scout's training. A working knowledge of the section and knowing how to plot a course are things which appeal to all sea-minded youngsters. From the making of scale models, the principles of ship construction are learned. Before Stanley can become a fully-fledged sea scout, he must pass the tenderfoot test. One of the tests consists of knowing how to tie at least six different knots and their uses. Most boys carry a piece of string in their pockets, among other things, but the real sea scout looks down on the humble string. He is much more interested in fathoms of cable, splicing, lashing, bends and hitches. Uh, excuse me, but I think that goes under there. Oh, I'm sorry, am I interrupting? However, it's not enough to know how to tie knots and cast off horses in theory. It's much more important to be able to carry them out in practice, without upsetting the boat. The main job of all good sea scouts is to qualify for various proficiency badges. These are awarded for prowess in subjects such as oarsmanship, swimming and lifesaving, firefighting, cooking, signaling, boat building, and many other accomplishments. By working and playing in patrols of six to eight boys under a patrol leader, scouts soon learn the meaning of teamwork. They accept and understand the responsibilities of leadership themselves. This training helps to give them some of the resourcefulness, pluck, and discipline of the seamen. It teaches them to be independent and to help other people. So the day arrives on which Stanley is to go through his tenderfoot test, and if successful, be inaugurated as a full member of the troop. The ship is made spick and span in readiness for the ceremony, which will be followed by a boat race. And for the survivors, there will be a little something in the way of food. Yes, you guessed it, sausages. Ah. So, feeling very pleased about his new uniform, but slightly shaky about the knees, Stanley goes aboard for the big event. His patrol leader, anxiously awaiting his protégé, gives him a last-minute check-over. Where did you get that hat? First of all, he must repeat the ten scout laws. A scout's honor is to be trusted. 
a scout is loyal to the king, his country, his officers, his parents, his employers, and those under him. A scout's duty is to be useful and to help others. A scout is a friend to all and a brother to every other scout, no matter to what social class the other belongs. A scout is courteous. A scout is a friend to animals. A scout obeys orders of his parents, patrol leader, or scout master without question. A scout smiles and whistles under all difficulties. A scout is thrifty. A scout is clean in thought, word, and deed. Next test is knot tying. This is a fisherman's knot. Used for tying two pieces of fishing line or gut together. Easy to tie, easy to undo. Here's a sheet bend. Used for tying together two ropes of unequal thickness. The harder the pull, the tighter the hole. The reef knot is perhaps the simplest. Best known to you land lovers. And like all good knots, compact and easily undone. Now I think we can pass those. Are you still knitting that jumper? The next test is the history and composition of the Union Jack. All scouts must know the meaning of their country's flag and the right way to fly it. The Union Jack actually consists of three different flags. On the Union of England with Scotland in 1606, the Red Cross of St. George on a white ground was merged with the White Cross of St. Andrew on a blue ground. Following Union with Ireland in 1801, the Red Cross on a white ground of St. Patrick was added, and thus formed the national flag of the British Empire. Test fast with flying colours, Stanley is ready for his inauguration. With the troops standing to the salute, and with his hand upon the flag, he gives the scout promise. On my honour, I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to God and the King, to help other people at all times, to obey the scout law. He receives his tenderfoot badge and a coloured knot, indicating that he is now a full member of the Curlew Patrol. Brings us to the boat race. Stanley is now qualified to pull his weight in the Curlew's boat. He's got a bit of weight behind him, too. look now, but I think the sausages have burst into flames. No, they're not too bad, so it's every man for himself and woe betide late comers. What more can a fellow ask? With sausages to the right and sausages to the left and mashed potatoes in the middle. You're just in time to wash up. After that little snack, everyone settles down to enjoy a spot of music. It doesn't necessarily have to be in tune as long as it's loud and hearty. Of course, you need a very good digestion to sing sea shanties when you're full of sausage and mash. But a good sailor needs a good digestion anyway. Ah, I see you fiddle. Here we must leave Stanley and his sea scout friends. But in parting, let us pay a tribute to that great scout, Lord Baden Powell, the founder of this movement for international service and comradeship, who started these boys on the road to becoming good and useful citizens of their country. Whatever their flag or nationality, wherever they may be, the scouts will stand as a symbol of a better future, free of spirit, out of heart, always prepared to play their part. The pioneers of tomorrow with the great tradition of the past.